Hello and welcome to An Old Man Watches and today I'm going to be talking about the 1964 British science fiction film First Man in the Moon uh, based on the H.G. Wells novel. Uh, and our story begins with a United Nations mission landing on the moon. Now remember the actual moon landing didn't occur till 1969, so five years after this film. Uh, on arrival on the moon, the astronauts are startled to discover an aged Union Jack flag and a scrap of paper claiming the moon in the name of Queen Victoria. Uh, fortunately, uh, the reverse side of the paper gives the authorities a clue as to the identity of these heretofore unknown lunar explorers. Uh, and they follow this clue to a nursing home in rural England, where they find an elderly man named Bedford, who is the last survivor of the Victorian voyage. Bedford seems very pleased to have finally been discovered and settles down to tell them of the strange adventure he undertook some 60 years earlier. Uh, a tale that involves a little fraud, a little romance, and the ingenuity of a certain Dr. Cavor, who invented a substance that was immune to the effects of gravity. Uh, Cavor used this Cavorite uh, to build a ship to travel to the moon, uh, a voyage that circumstances would dictate would also be taken by Bedford and Bedford's fiancée Kate. Uh, and would lead to the first contact between humans and extraterrestrial life. Um, now, of course, uh, the fact that our narrator's fiance is on the trip means that the first men on the moon actually include a woman, so first people would be more accurate. But this is a 1960s adaptation of a 19th century novel, so I think it can probably be forgiven for its lack of inclusive terminology. Unfortunately, what is less forgivable is that it's some, somewhat of an, an, an anemic production overall. It's not thrilling or exciting enough to engross as an adventure story, and it's not funny enough to qualify as a comedy that it sort of frequently seems to aspire to be. Um, there were apparently differences of opinion within the production team on the tone the film should have, and the resulting compromise likely failed to satisfy any of them. It certainly fails to satisfy me. Let's talk about some of the missteps that I think that this movie makes. So, first of all, uh, I'll be frank. My primary motivation for watching this movie in the first place was the promise of Ray Harryhausen's stop-motion special effects. Uh, Harryhausen did amazing things in this field over his career, um, but unfortunately, when compared to other Harryhausen projects of the same period, like Jason and the Argonauts or One Million Years BC, this movie's stop-motion offerings are frankly rather underwhelming. There's simply nothing of the scope and ambition of Talos the Iron Giant uh, or the justly renowned skeleton battle from Jason the Argonauts, uh, nor is there anything like the dinosaur battles of One Million Years BC. The closest this movie comes to either of those is the Moon Bull, which is ultimately just a very big caterpillar. Um, the bulk of the lunar creatures the human cast encounter basically just look like humanoid ants. In many scenes they're just people in suits rather than stop motion and it's just not an especially evocative design. Uh, apparently it was one that was chosen because Harryhausen's original design was considered too frightening for the family-friendly film that you know, at least some of the producers had in mind. Ultimately what this means is the film doesn't deliver the visual treat that I had hoped for. Secondly, uh, the film has a fairly big structural flaw with its framing device. It's a mistake um, to do this film the way it does it. The opening sequence of the astronauts discovering that someone made it to the moon 60 years before them is a cute moment, but it's just a moment. And the cost of it is to suck any kind of tension out of the fate of Bedford and Kate. We've literally been told that they made it back to Earth. Bedford is still alive, in good health, and regaling us with their story. Um, this fact is always going to be in the back of your head when you see one of the menace on screen. However much the, bull, the moon bull roars or Kate screams, it's fundamentally just sound and thunder signifying nothing. You know they're not in any actual danger. Now, a, a flashback type structure, you know, a, a, with a, a narrator wrapped around narrator wrapped around the outside of the main plot, can work within a film. Uh, I think if this movie had leaned heavily into being a comedy. It could have absolutely functioned in what is essentially entirely flashback. Uh, after all, you know, comedy films are not generally looking to create tension over the survival or otherwise of their characters. And yet, the problem is that First Man in the Moon doesn't commit to being a comedy. It commits to being an adventure movie, movie with a few gags. Um, and an adventure movie doesn't work in these circumstances. There needs to be some kind of sense of tension around the fate of the characters, and, and there, there isn't, frankly. Um, so that's another flaw with the film. The third flaw of the film is the narrator himself, Bedford. 
Um, when we first meet the young man version of Bedford, he's in the process of selling a cottage that he lives in to Dr. Cavor. It's a cottage he doesn't actually own. Uh, so he has no right to sell it. And he's completing the sale in the name of his fiance, who also does not own the cottage. So not only is he engaged in fraud, and pretty significant fraud, since the £5,000 he stands to gain equates to about US dollars today, but he's incriminating the woman he supposedly loves in the process without her knowledge or consent. Um, it's actually Kate's fury after discovering what Bedford's been up to that leads to Bedford and Cavor dragging her along on the mission to the moon, even though once there they promptly lock her in the capsule and wander off to explore without her. Uh, during set explorations, Bedford continues to be very self-interested and takes precipitous actions that endanger the others without much evident concern for the impacts on their safety. And at no point, including as an old man, does he apologise for this behaviour or give any indication that he feels there's anything for which he needs to apologise. makes it very, very hard for me to like him. He's you know, an unpleasant fellow, even though he's, he's kind of more or less our, our central character. It's, yeah... Again, if they had gone full comedy, maybe they could have made this work, but they didn't. They, they more or less present him as a straightforward action hero within the context of the movie. But he's not. It's, it's a strange kind of disconnect that the film has, and it didn't work for me at all. So yeah, First Man in the Moon, disappointing, basically. I had hoped for a, a fun uh, adventure romp with some great Harryhausen effects, and I, I didn't really get that. Next time, I'm going to brave the Killjoy Francis franchise one more time uh, to look at the 2010 offering Killjoy 3, Killjoy's Revenge. But that's next time. Until then, thanks for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it.